What a joy that you have found us for this podcast. How exciting it is to think that this spiritual message is going out to people around this planet. Whether your life is working at a peak level or whether it can use some enhancement, have I got the message for you today. So get a piece of paper, get ready to take notes, call a friend, have them watch this podcast also. Then you too can have something to talk about and take it to a deeper level. So enjoy. Here we go. Good morning, Seaside. You know what? We don't have to wait any longer. The world is a better place already because of what you are doing, because of who you are. Oh, my goodness. We're celebrating you today. We're celebrating the difference you're making. We're just honoring you for this wonderful spiritual home that you have created. And it is absolutely, as we say yes to the gifts that God has put in our heart, that this world is a better place for each and every one of us. And I also understand that as we are living this that has been put in our heart, our true heartedness, we come up against these problems sometimes. And so this morning's message is about understanding that a problem is not a problem when it's an opportunity. And this concept of your challenge opportunity, problem, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's that roadblock that is in your way and slowing you down. If you can begin to see it with a new kind of eyes, the shift begins to happen. It is, um, you know, it's going around the law of attraction. It doesn't matter what it is you're calling it. What matters is that you begin to make that uh, choice in your life to realize that this is an opportunity that need not stop me. It doesn't need to hold me back anymore, that I'm going to remember to get connected. Everybody got your puzzle piece still? If not, pick it up. But I'm going to remember to be connected when those challenges are there. And if not... Ow! <laughs> Got yours? Pick up your rubber band if you, if you don't have it. But I, I want us from now on to absolutely be able to stand in our strength. To be able to stand in our strength when our dreams are being slashed and our faith is being bashed and the denouncer of our true heartedness is, is just yelling with all of its passion and fairment and we can just move through that with a deep kind of knowingness. Because I understand when those times arise in our life, I sometimes just want to run up the stairs and slam the door and jump in bed, pull the covers over my head and hope to sleep until the next century. <laughs> Whoa. But you got what it takes. Maya Angelou, wonderful, powerful, resonant voice, one time said that I cannot believe that he would have carried me this far to let me down now. I could not believe that he has carried me this far to let me down now. So you're the one who must have the consciousness. Another word for consciousness is awareness. You are the one who must have the know-how, the guts, the tenacity to look inside of your soul and begin to choose a new way because the consciousness will fill the space around you with what it is you believe. That's cause and effect, law of attraction, mental equivalence. Doesn't matter what you call it, but what I want us to remember, it's imperative that we get connected when we are facing that challenge and we snap ourselves to remember, I've got to move, be connected so I can move beyond in my life. Because you know what? You bring gifts. My heart is filled with the service that you bring humanity, that you bring our church, and I am here to assist you to know that you are pulling into your life that which you choose to be aware of. God can be shouting at you from every angle, from every bush from every location and unless you allow that presence into your life it does you no good Thursday, I had to uh, get some documents off to the, uh, to the east. I had to get them in the mail in time in case there was an issue. They could let me know so I could get taken care of by Thursday afternoon. Didn't hear. Everything was fine. Actually, I did get a call. It said all documents were there. I felt comforted, comforted. Friday, I was going to lunch with my dad. And all of a sudden, just at noon when I was about to leave with my dad, I got a phone call and said, we're missing about a half a dozen documents. And my first reaction was like, blame? It's like, what? You told me they were all there. Oh, and they need to be in by 2 o'clock today or the deal is off. And it's like, but I don't have the documents. And they told me where I could go find them online. So go searching. Then you got to go get to a notary. And on top of the notary, you have to fax them to us before you FedEx them. And we've got to have it in our office by 5 o'clock, which is in a couple hours. And I've got to pick Trevor, my son, up at school at 2.30. <laughs> if I didn't accept the pressure in my life, it's like, 
oh my. And so, you know, the, the insides are going. I'm running around. I'm finding things. I, I go to a notary. They help me get all the documents. I get, get things signed. And all of a sudden, it is 2 o'clock. And I'm racing to that little, you know, postal annex next to Trader Joe's, the one that can do the faxing and the FedExing in time for me. It's a little after 2. I'm trusting they're going to stay in their office. I go whizzing up. It's a gorgeous Friday afternoon, and everybody in San Diego is doing their shopping for the bright, great weekend we're going to have. And there is no parking by Trader Joe's. I go in front of Ralph's. There is no parking. Everybody in the county has been parking where I want to go. So I thought, okay, law of attraction, mental equivalent, remedial metaphysics, parking spot 101. Time to call it forward. Didn't work. <clears throat> This whole county is filled with metaphysicians and youth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I park in Timbuktu and I grab my documents. I run like a, you know, a half back through the parking lot. I get in there. You know, it, it's like 10 after 10 and I'm sweating and they helped me. They, they got things faxed off in time. We got it in there. I'm looking at the clock and thinking, Trevor, and, and I just mentioned to the guy the parking situation and he said, oh, you know, you could park right in front of those yellow crossed off area that that's for anybody who wants to come in our shop. You're welcome to park there anytime you want. And it's like, here it is. God had given it to me. Spirit shouts to us from every angle if we have the consciousness and the awareness to, to look. You know, this problem became my opportunity to remember not to give my power away to the appearance of no parking. Not to give, you know, it was there. And that's what I'm saying is spirit is everywhere in our life talking to us, yelling to us, but it does us no good unless we allow it in. And so that problem became my opportunity to remember in the midst of the mountain, the confusion, the difficulty, the opportunity, what the doctor says, what the bank account says, to remember that my source is infinite, that I need not give my power away to anyone or anything outside of myself. And that these challenges in my life are an opportunity to remember. To remember. You know, at this conference last week in San Jose, Dr. Dean Carter Dean, a, a theological uh, seminary at Morehouse College, the one that Martin Luther King Jr. was part of, he asked an interesting question. He said, Are you still working on yourself? Are you still working on yourself? You know, probably inside going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he asked, so is this all we get? Is this all we get? If you're still working on yourself and you have come to a mountain or you have come to the challenge in your life or there is a situation in this world or your spiritual com community and you're stopped, is this all we get from you? Or are you really still working on yourself and know that that problem, that break, is just an opportunity for you to know God even more? Because once you look through, you look back and say, oh, why did I worry? Spirit was taking care of me the whole time. The parking was waiting for me the whole time. You get on the other side and say, oh, of course there was a path up that mountain in my life. I remember a kid once saying that common sense is like a rainbow. You only get it after the storm. <laughs> what wisdom from a young one. So if I know that there is no time or space, I can begin to receive that wisdom now in my life if I open up and I become receptive to that. And so when I face something, I realize, you know what, here's an opportunity. You know, we, most of us are familiar with the Sylvester Stallone story around Rocky, you know, watched prize fight, and a guy go the distance with a champ, and he was inspired to write the script. The studio offered him 20 grand for it. He said, well, only if I could star in it. And they said, no way. Got up to $80,000, and he said, no way. They said, you know what? I think we can get Robert Redford if we can. We will give you 200000 for that script. And Stallone said, only if I can star in it. Can you have it? They got up to over $300,000. Finally, they agreed to let him star in it, and that they would only pay him minimum wage, which was about a little more than 330 dollars a day. So by the time he was done shooting the show, paid his taxes and things, he made little more than $6,000 for that first Rocky. But as we know, it went on to win a best picture in a whole 
bunch of other stuff for him. But what stuck with me is he said that I take rejection like a bugle in my ear to get up and get going as opposed to retreat. When you've got that bugle in your ear, do you take it as a sign, i got to get out of here? Or do you take it as time to get up and get going? Because the challenges in life are part of your opportunity to be greater than. Um, you know, the, the, the world is filled with stories. I mean, one that touches our heart is Viktor Frankl. Wrote in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. He said, all of us who lived in the concentration camp were aware of the individuals. There were few who were able to bring comfort to individuals and would give them their last piece of bread. But it showed me that there is one thing that can never be taken from man, and that is his freedom to choose his attitude. Wow. These individuals chose to be of service. They chose to make a difference. Life will throw you questions. And you got to remember, oh, am I really connected? Am I connected to a bigger picture? Fred Astaire had above his mantle in his Beverly Hills home, his fireplace, the original rejection notice from MGN. Cannot act, balding, can dance. <laughs> Didn't stop him. You know, Beethoven, we know this story. You know, he's very awkward with the violin. His teacher said he preferred working on his own compositions, but told him that he would never be a good composer. Um, Edison, uh, they, uh, he flunked out of school. Uh, Albert Einstein, you know the story, he didn't read until he was seven. Uh, he also flunked. His teacher said that he is unsociable, that he is always lost in his own dreams. He flunked out of college and was refused admission in the Zurich Polytech School. Disney, we know his story. I mean, I can keep going through these things. He got, you know, fired from the paper because he, he lacked imagination. He went <laughs> bankrupt before he started Disneyland. You know, the, the stories are many that are there. Winston Churchill, flunked sixth grade, did not become prime minister until the age of 62. Richard Hooker worked on his book for seven years, rejected by 21 publishers until Morrow Publishing House took his book called MASH that went on to be a phenomenon in our culture. You know, the, the thing is, Henry Ford said that obstacles become frightening when we take our eye off the goal. When we take our eye off the vision, when we forget to see as God sees, those obstacles become frightening. Those challenges and those problems begin to seem unsurmountable, but they are an opportunity for us to remember who we are. And if they begin to be real, snap and get back to what it is you want to create in your life because everything is possible with God. And so I know, it's not really a secret, but I know you failed in your life. You don't have to fess up to it, but I, I, I know your first steps, you didn't start running like a, a gold medal athlete. You fell at first. When you first got thrown in the water, you almost drowned. I know when I, you know, first tried to hit a baseball, I didn't hit it. They didn't have t-ball when I was a kid. They threw it at you. I don't think I even swung the first year. Yeah. This failing stuff's overrated, you know? And Macy failed seven times before his store ever took off in New York. But what I want us to take a look at in our life is if you don't go for it, that which has been placed in your heart, if you don't step into service and bring forth your gift, I'm not saying you've got to do what you don't like to do, but to find places you can serve and to share who you are, to be that conduit through which spirit goes. If you do not honor that Inside of you, what would you have missed if you stopped at that mountain and said, I cannot go any farther? What would you have missed? And we stop ourselves with these thoughts that are just less than pleasant, with violence, and, and just we beat ourselves up that I, I can't do it or I'm not worthy. This isn't being connected. This isn't assisting you to move beyond in your life. We're here today to celebrate you for what you have contributed in your life. You have contributed a lot because you have moved through whatever has impeded you at a certain point in your life. I thank you for that. You bring so much to this community. We are different because of you. We're creating these wonderful miracles to beautify and unify our spiritual campus 
because you're here, standing on the shoulders of those that came before us. And so what we've got to do is, actually in this peace conference, they said if there was one thing we could eliminate, here is a, a conference for peace. They said it wouldn't be war and it wouldn't be violence. If there was one thing we could eliminate from this world, it would be fear. Because fear creates the violence. Fear creates our actions that are less than divine. Fear creates a nastiness. A fear creates a scarcity mentality and actions that are less than generous outpouring of God. It has us say things we wish we could have taken back. You know, fear makes people attack. You get a little mouse caught in the corner with a broom. That little teeny mouse is going to attack that broom. It doesn't have a chance. But that's what fear does. It has us attack whatever it is we, we're seeing as the problem. And what I am here to say is to take a new thought and call it as an opportunity or a launching pad to help you bring forth your true-heartedness, your true expression, that divine that you are here. Because I know sometimes in my life, I feel like I'm heading down the highway. Now, I'm going down the highway, lickety-split, I'm careening down this highway without headlights, without a map, and without hotel reservations. And I am just, I, I'm abandoning pragmatism for magnetism. I, I am absolutely just trusting that tidal wave of the divine surge of spirit that engages me to believe in that vision and not be frightened by the obstacles that appear there. How about you? That's it. I, but to do that, I sometimes just got to get into the game. Got to get into the dance. I got to put myself out there and use life's experiences as an opportunity to go deeper, to bring forth more of who I am and realize that I'm tapping into an infinite reservoir. Sometimes I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm in the dance, I'm in the flow, I'm in the groove. And other times it, it's as if I'm wondering why I climbed out on this little thin limb on the tallest tree in the neighborhood. It's as if I have just awakened from this dream and I find myself way up high holding on by the smallest little... Ugh, and wondering, what am I doing? And I have found the best way is to enter back into that dream, into that vision, into that belief and back into that dance. And choose to know that I am surrounded by spirit and it does me no good if I'm not seeing it. And that I am going to continue to remind myself to get connected with a source that can provide a parking spot, that can dissolve a doctor's verdict, that can bring forth the wealth in your life to source any project or dream that you might have. That the ways are infinite and many. We might get stopped sometimes. That's not the end. It is an opportunity to know God in a greater way. It doesn't matter what has happened in your life. It doesn't matter how many failures you have had. And it doesn't matter how many blunders you have been part of. What matters is now. Now is the appointed time to step in and practice that presence. Practicing the presence allows us to rid ourselves of the responsibility that it lies on me to use my knowledge, my understanding, and my wisdom. We're told, lie not on your own understanding. Yeah. I peace is with you. That's what we're told in Isaiah. He gives you peace. <clears throat> Let us know that as one begins to practice the presence, what happens is there's a remolding of one's conscious awareness. There is a reshaping of a deeper understanding that it doesn't rest on me, that rather it moves through me, and what comes through me are new ways, new approaches, new ideas, new understandings on how to approach what is there that is before me. Because if God is everything, what is before me is God. Of the story of Moses Mendelssohn, the grandfather of the great German composer. He was born um, less than attractive. They say he was short with a hunched back and just tough to look at. And um, one day he went uh, to Hamburg um, to do some business, uh, was working with a merchant, and the merchant had a beautiful daughter that just swept his heart and him off his feet. And um, but the sad part is she couldn't even stand to look at him, which is not good. And so, 
So before he left, he mustered up enough courage to go up the stairs and try one more time. And he tried, and, and she just you know, couldn't look at him, and she was just this object of beauty and everything a, a young little guy could wish for. And, um, and then he said, an idea came to mind. He said, do you believe that marriage is made in heaven? And she's still looking down at the ground and said, yes, do you? And he said, oh, yes, absolutely. I believe that whenever a boy is born, the Lord shows him who his wife will be. And when the Lord showed me my wife and said, but there's be one challenge, she will have a hump on her back. And he said, that would be a tragedy for a young woman to have a hump on her back. Give me her hump and make her the most beautiful expression of life ever. Well, there was something that touched that young lady's heart. She picked her head up and looked at him in his eyes, gave her his hand, and they were married. There's something in us that allows us to shift. There is always an answer. And if your desire is to be that expression of the divine, if your desire is to serve spirit to the best of your ability wherever you are, that doesn't mean you've got to go do things you don't like doing. But if I can bring forth that presence in a life that will assist me to move in a new way, transformation will happen. That presence of God will lift me to a higher place, to a higher ground, to a new way of being. But what is imperative is that we are able to free our mind of the gravitational pull of circumstances, of people's thought, of the fears, of the personality of the culture, to free ourselves from the gravitational facts that are out there and be like an arrow on course to the target that has been fired, not sidetracked by pictures that frighten one because of the problems and the obstacles, but by a vision that pulls us forward, realizing that we will come up to challenges along the way in this thing called life, but they are neither good nor bad, thinking makes them so. I think it was Shakespeare who said that. You know, we will come up against them, but do we give our power away? Problem is not a problem when it is an opportunity. And if you want to move beyond in your life, it's imperative that you remember you are connected to a larger picture that is emerging. You may not see the whole picture yet, and there may be difficulties. Martin Luther King said that um, we may have to give in to finite difficulties, but never do we have to lose infinite hope. So whatever's going on, as you're creaming down that road without headlights, but yet there's a tidal wave that is within you that says move forward. Honor that dream to be and to create in your life. There is nothing that can stop you. And as you continue to do your work and choose to call forth your awareness to practice that presence and know that God is all around and is about bringing my awareness to see the good that is waiting for me that I may be missing. What happens when the shift takes place? Your world that, that may be black and white and drab and misty all of a sudden bursts into a prism of colors and light and then you will know that those problems in your life are not problems, but they are opportunities and God's gift to you in disguise. God bless us as we practice this in our life. So I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward as we do take our gift from our heart. Again, a lot of heart and soul and passion. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am prosperous now. I trust you enjoyed that podcast. It was very exciting to be able to create that and to know that there are people like you all around the world that are observing and integrating these spiritual principles into their life. And so if you enjoyed it, what I'd like to do is encourage you to tell a friend or bring several friends together and watch another one of these podcasts. And then afterwards, take some time to talk about the spiritual principles, to talk about the stories and what significance they have and relevance they have in your life. What then happens is it moves to a deeper and deeper level in your world. It becomes real and assists you to create the freedom in your life that your heart and soul so desire. So if you like this, I encourage you to watch it again, but also tune into our website here at seasidecenter.org. There, um, you can get some of my written material and take a look at it. You can read some of my spiritual prayers. You can even go to our online bookstore and order some of the books. And if 
you're so moved, what I greatly would appreciate is your financial support, which you could do online at seasidecenter.org. It is support like yours that assists us to be able to continue to do these kinds of gifts for humanity and send it out to the world. Because you know what? We are making a difference with this spiritual message. And because of support like yours, people are being touched in the farthest reaches of this planet, as well as our backyard, more than we could ever begin to realize. So I thank you from the fullness of my heart for making a difference.